My guest believes your life history is hidden in code in the Bible. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet, the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, and I've been so looking forward to this show because I have Roy Reinhold here, and he's one of these people that have found hidden codes in the Bible. I actually asked him to see if my name was in the Bible. Roy, how did you get interested in these hidden codes in the Bible? Well, Sid, I, I started this about four years ago. Uh, I was praying one day. You're, you're retari retired military. I'm retired military. I retired six years ago as a Navy officer. And I was praying one day about four years ago, and the Lord suddenly spoke to me and said, Roy, I want you to learn Hebrew. That came out of the blue. I'm not, I'm not Jewish. I don't know any Hebrew. And so I agreed to do that. He didn't tell me why. And then three months later, uh, he spoke to me again and said, Roy, I want you to get involved and develop the Bible codes. And so I've been uh, involved with it ever since, Sid. Now, briefly describe to me, what is the Bible code? The Bible code is where we take the Tanakh, or the Torah, the Old Testament text, and we take out all the spaces and punctuation marks and we're left with a, uh, a continuous line of text. We put that in a software program. Some people do it by hand. And we create matrices or grids of rows and columns, and we look for terms that are displayed in there. Much like in the newspaper, they have the small little grids where you're supposed mm -hmm. to find the word and circle it. To, to, it's to, kinda, to kinda whet the appetite, <clears throat> let's take one that you have found or that others have found. Let's say everyone's heard about uh, the death of Princess Diana. What was found there? We have a matrix on Princess Diana that uh, has about 45 terms, and the center term is Spencer, which was her, the, the royal name there. And uh, it shows Diana, uh, uh, Dodi Fayed, uh, who she was dating at the right. time, the Paul, the driver. Uh, it shows that they died in a tunnel in Paris in an automobile accident. Uh, photographers are prominently mentioned, and uh, a lot of other incidents in, uh, about the uh, tragic accident with Princess Now, Diana. if I was to take another book that was just as big as the Hebrew Scriptures, let's just take a, war, a book like War and Peace, and assuming it was in Hebrew, because it would have to be in Hebrew, right. Uh, and I was to run the computer test, would I find similar things? Could it be in any book this many things altogether? If you look for one or two terms in it, you'll find those in any book in any language. Uh, what makes the Bible code different is that we find large clusters of groupings of terms uh, that are clustered cr close together and that are, are tied together. In, a, in another uh, text like War and Peace in Hebrew, what you'd find in, if you were looking for like the University of Purdue, mm -hmm. someone had gone there, those are word pairs, they should be close together. In a random sense, in a matrix, it might be University over here and Purdue over here, you know, they don't go together. But in the Bible code, they're together. And so it's, it's the arrangement of terms in a matrix or grid that shows that the Bible code is valid. So you're saying to me, though, if I'm understanding <clears throat> you right, I don't want to put words in your mouth, okay. that no other book but the Bible has so many groupings together. Exactly. It's the total design of the whole thing, where <clears throat> we have matrices on, on uh, events and real things. We have matrices on people, and we have matrices about God and His nature. Tell me about another one like, say, Thomas Edison, the great inventor. What was found in that? With the Thomas Edison matrix, that was one of the first large matrices I'd ever done, and, and it was to prove to myself that the Bible code was real. So I, 
I went in autobiographies and found a list of about 75 or 80 terms where it showed Edison, his wives, places he lived, his children, and over 25 inventions. And I found them all in a single matrix that is readable where you would read the words um, horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. It's, it, you found how many inventions? Uh, over 25 inventions, and the matrix itself has uh, over 75 terms in it. How can this all, I mean, how can all of these people be in the Bible? It doesn't seem to be that big a book. I don't understand this. Well, it, it's the way it is designed. Uh, th there's a very narrow window for each matrix. Uh, uh, if you have a matrix set with a, a, a width of 100, then to be vertical, it would have to be 100 or just a few either side of it to show diagonally. Uh, so it's a very narrow window for mm -hmm. each one. And so because of that design, you can have, uh, it's possible to have billions of matrices in the Bible. Is it possible to find out future events by the Bible code? I think so, and I've certainly stated that openly. But there are other um, prominent teachers of the Word of God that say, no, you're not supposed to do them on the future. I, I think it's possible. The reason is, if you can do a historical matrix, then a matrix on the future that's going to happen a year mm -hmm. from now is historical in the sense that if you looked for it two years from now, you'd be looking back. So there is no logical reason why you cannot look for a matrix uh, on a future event except that it's much harder because you don't know what is going to okay. happen. Yeah, I know as a fact that you looked up the Israeli election where Barack won. Tell me what you found before the election. Uh, 60 days before the election and 30 days, uh, I, did, I had a matrix and, and developed it with a couple of other people. And in both cases, it showed that Ehud Barak would win the May 1999 election in Israel. At the time, uh, before the election, the, the previous prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, was heavily favored to win. Everybody thought he'd win. So the Bible code in these two different matrices showed that Ehud Barak would win. Well, what it, just out of curiosity, what did it say? Did it say Barak would win? Yes. It actually said yes. that? Yes. I think this is so amazing. What about you? What if your name was in the Bible? I'm looking forward to the fact that there is all sorts of research done on my name in the Bible. I mean, and he found the most amazing things. I'm still having difficulty not believing that it's there, but just comprehending that this book we call the Bible, that many people just have dust on this and, and is sitting on a shelf, is so supernatural. We'll be back right after these words. Don't go away. Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. And just, the, just during the break, I found out last week Roy found something. If you think what he said so far is mind-blowing, listen to this. Do you remember when you were back in high school, or some of you may be in high school right now, and they had the uh, periodic uh, chart of elements, that long list and uh, all the little symbols for each element? Roy, what did you find in the Bible code about the periodic chart of elements? Well, Sid, a couple of, uh, about a month and a half ago, I decided to look and see if there were a matrix on the periodic table of elements, because some of the critics have said, you know, there's wiggle room in the way you spell words or what you look for. Mm -hmm. So I thought by taking something where we know there's no choice, the names are there, and we have little choice in the matter, and I looked for a single matrix uh, that has all the elements. And if you could hold this. Sure. What, this is just the matrix report, and what it shows is in Hebrew, the term, and in, the, in English, and the equidistant letter spacing uh, that is displayed at. And in this matrix, we have the, 
entire periodic table of elements, and we have all the elements from 1 to 109. Uh, so we have 112 separate terms in this one. Now, now what you're saying is that all of these elements were found in one grid. In one grid, and not only found there, but you can read them on it, vertically, uh, horizontally, huh. or diagonally. So it's an incredible breakthrough for people who've had a scientific background. Now, did it say in, in code the periodic table of elements also? Yes, the center terms here are periodic uh, table of elements, now, right in the center. Now, what I'm concerned about, Roy, is some of, uh, of the viewers perhaps don't quite understand the Bible code yet. So I'm going to say it in a simplistic fashion, and you correct me. You be the teacher right now. As I understand it, when I was a kid, I would find simple codes. I'd have right. a, a sheet filled with uh, words and I'd go like every, I'd come up with uh, an arbitrary figure that was the code, let's say five. Right. Every fifth letter I would write down. I'd go five letters, I'd write the letter down. Then I'd go another five, I'd write the letter down. Find, I'd find a word and then I would find a sentence and that's a very simplistic code. Is that the premise of this? Exactly. And if you look on the example here on uh, Zenon, uh, element 54, it's at an equidistant letter space of minus one. So in this case, it's just reversed, but it's every letter. And you have five letters in a row uh, spelled there, Kaf, Samik, Nun, Vav, and Nun. Well, you really learned your Hebrew. <laughs> well, I, I don't have a Jewish background, but I've learned uh, Hebrew. Now, now, are there elements that you found that no one else has found yet in the code? Is that a possibility? Well, you know, that's one of the reasons why I did this matrix, but certainly I haven't looked yet. And uh, there are 115 actual elements discovered so far, but any above 109 have a temporary name. Mm -hmm. And so I, I didn't look for, for them yet um, since they had temporary names. But uh, that's something I think I'd like to look for in the future to see if, if I can find out how many elements God created or what other elements we are going to be discovered yet. Okay. I can hardly wait, although I have to be honest, I've peaked, I know. You found my name in the Bible, but you believe everyone's name is there. Yes, I believe that there is a, there is a single matrix on the life of every person. We can't prove it because we've only done, yeah, 50, done every person. 50 or 100, so we can't prove that there is. But if you do 50 and all 50 are there, then you can kind of conclude that maybe everybody's Look, I'm impressed. I, I, I gave you my, my name. As a matter of fact, I gave him my birth name, which then, I, many years ago, I changed, I shortened. My birth name is uh, Sidney Abraham Rothbaum. My legal name is Sid Roth. But, so I gave you that information, and tell me what you found, and, and perhaps I can hold this uh, up. First of all, what are we looking at? What is all of this Hebrew? <coughs> This is, uh, very inter this is very explanatory for people. A, a matrix is just, is just rows and columns. So it's just letters. And a from, lot from where is this in the Bible? It starts up here in the upper right and goes from Song of Solomon down to the book of Nehemiah uh, in the lower okay. left. And, and, okay, explain this now. It's the, a life matrix on a person is set up very logically. The center term or the main term is the last name of the person. In this case, your last name. What you, does it say? It says Rothbaum, which was your name before you shortened it to yes. Roth. And uh, also here is a clump of r right in this area. And we have Sydney, Sydney. We have your middle name, Abraham. And we have your Jewish name, or Hebrew name. Uh, yeah, inc incidentally, every, every Jewish person has a, a name from the country they're from, but also a Hebrew name. And my, na my Hebrew name is Yisrael ben Yaakov David. And so right here in this same general area where we had Sidney and Abraham, your first and middle name, we have Yisrael ben Yaakov David right here mm. in the same exact area. Right above that is your date of birth information. We have uh, Shalosh Tammuz 5700, which was uh, sep September 7th, 1940. That's exactly it. And it's, now, you told me something interesting, that the date of birth is normally found in the same section for most people. Is that, is that correct? 
All the matrices I've done on people's lives, it's, uh, it's in the upper right-hand corner, sometimes maybe down to this area, but it's in this particular area of the matrix. And in this case, it shows above and below your date of birth, it shows Leda, birth. Now, on this page, and I don't want you to tell me, okay. is my death, in your opinion? Oh, yes, it's on there. Uh, I no, don't, don't tell me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but your wife's name is on there. Really? That's what does it say? It says, uh, Well, jo her name is Joyce. Joyce, Thurley, and Young. Wait a second. Now, give me a break. Uh, let me give you this chart back. My wife's name is an old family name. No one I know has that name for a middle name. You're telling me that in the Bible, written thousands of years ago, it's Joyce, Thurley, and uh, Young? Is there? Yes, and not only that, but they're crossing. In crossing those, it says wife. So it's below your last name, and it shows that she's your wife. And it was written 3,000 years ago in, in the uh, Bible, and in, encoded in the Bible code. Is there any explanation? I mean, you're, you're, you're a real thinker type person, I can tell. You're also a very uh, logical type of person. Is there any explanation of why my name, my wife's name, my date of birth, you even found the name of the organization that I'm with in there and the exact date that it was founded. <laughs> I mean, is, is there any explanation beyond God wrote the book? Is there any other explanation? Well, some people have come up with some real oddball things, but there is no explanation except to, to note that whoever encoded it n knew all these events long ago because, for example, it starts at the book Song of Solomon, which was written about 1000 B.C., so here we have 3,000 years ago that was encoded underneath it. So whoever encoded the information, which I believe is God, knew the uh, important events about every person's life. Imagine that. 3,000 years ago, God put my name in the Bible in code my wife's name in the Bible, the name of my organization, the date it started, the date I was born. I mean, give me a break, you skeptics. Where are you when I need you? We'll be right back after this. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. I'm here with Roy Reinhold. And Roy, you said that in code, and, and this really surprised me, there are only three places where you find Jesus the Messiah, that phrase, or Hebrew, Yeshua HaMashiach, and one of them had an astounding thing in their matrix. Tell me about it. Yes, in the entire Tanakh, the Old Testament, there, it's all, Yeshua HaMashiach is only found three times. And I cut out the center part of it to, to show the audience. The center term actually says, Mahusha Yeshua HaMashiach, hello which me is translated into English as, what is he, the gift, Yeshua the Messiah, is it not? Surely it is. Say that again, will you? What is he, the gift, Yeshua the Messiah, is it not? Surely it is. It's an incredible uh, central... Uh, can, I, can I hold that up? Sure. Tell me about this It's now. an incredible... Um, single central term of 17 letters long. Now, on a statistical basis, the chances of that occurring are, are infinitesimally small. And what was incredible about this matrix, as I looked at it further, is that this particular matrix, uh, next to it, it says, announcement, I am coming soon with love to Israel. Oh my goodness, it really says that there? Yes. And Jesus, get this now, Jesus the Messiah, announcement, I'm coming soon with love to Israel. Again, skeptics, where are you when I need you? Go ahead. And the matrix goes on to uh, cover the second coming. That's why this matrix is so important. It covers all aspects of the second coming. Of, of the Messiah. Of the Messiah. It talks about him. How, how does this line, what I want to know is, how does it line up what is in code with what it says in, in our translations in, 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 the, in the Tanakh. In other words, it tells us what to expect in the Bible. Does the code also tell us the same things or different things or more things? The, uh, the Bible code actually agrees with the prophecies of the Bible. 
And in some cases, it amplifies and gives us a few more details. Uh, for example, this is only the center part of the matrix, but if, if I showed you the whole matrix above, up above in this area, there would be uh, uh, an area that showed where the armies of the Earth will attack the Messiah, and they're going to use chemical, nuclear, and biological weapons How against How do you know that? It states it specifically. Really? Yes. And but they didn't know about chemical and nuclear and biological weapons when the prophets, ancient prophets, penned these words. Uh, no, I don't think the people who wrote the book knew any of that. They, 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 there wasn't even an automobile or computer That's or right. telephone. Exactly. Nothing. <laughs> and, but it, it states uh, right in there that nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons, and they're going to attack the Messiah, but he's going to render the weapons uh, useless or be turned back on the armies that launched them, uh, which is exactly what, for example, is written in Zechariah 14, where it talks about uh, the armies of the earth attacking the Messiah and uh, the weapons being rendered useless. And then there's another area that's really interesting in this matrix, and it talks about judgment of the people living on the earth. And specifically, it talks about judging of the Jewish people in the prophetic fulfillment of Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement. And it talks about the... What, what do you mean by judging? The Messiah is going to be sitting there on a throne, and he's going to judge the people who are alive on the earth. They're going to come before him, and he's going to judge whether they are going to be allowed to stay and populate the earth or whether they're going to be rejected. Now, the Bible talks about uh, a book of life, and in Judaism, on Yom Kippur, we pray and fast that our name be inscribed in the book of life. Do you believe that the book of life might be the Bible? Well, if I answered it and said, yes, I think there's a good possibility, but I actually asked the, um, the Lord one day that question. I, while I was praying one day, and I asked the the Lord, is the book of life encoded in the Bible? Certainly I know it's not encoded in the equidistant letter spacing system we're using now for the Bible code. And he answered me on it and said, yes, it's encoded there, but it's a different encoding system, and I'm not going to allow anyone to break that coding system uh, right now. And, from my, uh, and the reason why would probably be that uh, this life here is a testing place. And if you knew your, your name was in the book of life and you didn't have to do anything about it or have any faith or read the word of God, then uh, it wouldn't be much of a test. So certainly some of those things are left uh, as unknowns to us. Hmm. Well, I've, I, I've got a question. I have a question for you. And that is... It's unknown. We, we, uh, we don't have the, the way to break the code, in the, assuming the Bible is the book of life. But there is a way to know for sure that your name is in the book of life. I mean, absolutely know for sure. I don't mean just say a little prayer and have someone else tell you your name is in the book of life. I mean, there's a way that you can know yourself. And I'll tell you, because I had that experience. I know that I know that I know. I don't hope it. I mean, being Jewish, no one told me Jesus was the Messiah as a child. I learned that Jesus wasn't the Messiah, is what I was taught. But I had my own experience. And whether you're Jewish or Gentile, whether you're Christian or Muslim, each person must have their own experience with God. And there's no other name given unto men in which we must be saved, but that Yeshua HaMashiach, who is going to judge the earth, first, sincerely, tell God you're sorry for your sins, because you really offended Him. You really sinned against Him, and Him only. Ask Him to forgive you. Ask Him to cover your sins with His blood. And believe, by faith, that he's coming to live inside of you and say out loud, Jesus, I make you Lord of my life. I make you Lord over every area of my life. I want to know you. I have a great 
desire to know you, oh God, become real to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. You said that. God heard it. And now believe he's going to move. He is going to move.